What's the difference between a brand leveraging culture in an appreciative way versus a brand doing it in an appropriative way? So a cultural appropriation by definition is about power. It's about uh, a community with power, a group of people with power, taking the cultural markers markers of a marginalized community that doesn't have as much power and giving it new meaning. It's reworking meaning as if the original meaning was meaningless, right? It's almost like it's like Christopher Columbusing new things. Like, oh, look at this place. We're going to call it America. We're going to do this. Like, hey, people lived here first, dude. You know, it's like it's taking a thing that already exists, stripping it of its meaning and give it new meaning, right? Um, you know, I, I write about this in the book and sort of famously in some ways, you know, Kim Kardashian shows up on the red carpet of the MTV Music Awards and she's wearing corn rolls. And they go, Kim, we love your hair. What are those? And Kim says, oh, they're Bo Derek braids. Mm, okay, I'm actually, they're corn rolls. And they existed way before the movie 10 came out. Like you've taken the cultural markers of a group of people, black people, and you've given it new meaning. You have appropriated other people's culture. The difference between cultural appropriation and a cultural appreciation is that cultural appreciation is that I understand what those things mean. It requires uh, some curiosity and some understanding. And it's because I understand what those things mean that I celebrate in the culture when it's appropriate. So when you see you know, kids at Coachella wearing headdresses because it looks cool, clearly they're not aware of what those markers mean because they wouldn't be doing it because it's disrespectful to, to that community of people. But it's, I understand what those things mean and I use it in the context uh, that is appropriate, then that becomes cultural appreciation. You know, when in Rome, you do as the Romans. Like when you go to other countries, you eat what they eat, you wear what they wear, you do their thing. And that you're doing that with some knowledge that this is what is appropriate and there for you. The only difference between the two is slight, but the outcomes are just massively different. One is taking someone's culture and giving it new meaning. The other one is understanding its meaning and paying respect to it, but still being able to engage in it. It's that reverence for the meaning behind everything that culture has built and expressed itself instead of seeing it as something that you can leverage to sell more products or to look cool, to gain status. That's right. You can't use people's culture as cosplay. Like, it's just like, it, it, this isn't like, I mean, pull this on right quick. This is kind of fun. And then, all right, I'm done with it. On to the next thing. Um, it's just paying honor to it. That's it. I mean, it's such a simple thing. It's such a simple thing. Uh, but oftentimes, the obvious isn't obvious until someone points it out to you. Well, from a brand perspective and the work that you do as a marketer, a lot of these brands have been around through many cultural shifts, right? So you have a great example of Budweiser in the book. And it takes a level of really understanding and going deeper into the culture than just looking at the production and saying, we're going to slap Budweiser on this production. And all of a sudden, everyone in this culture is going to identify with us and drink Budweiser. You have to go much deeper into what is the core belief and identity behind this culture? And does it align with the brand, like truly? Or are we just trying to put our sticker on it in hopes that everyone with that identity will pull out their wallet? That's right. I mean, this is... This is all about intimacy. You know, I think about it that, you know, we can observe groups of people um, like we're looking at a map, but you need to know the terrain. Like you need to understand what the people are. I mean, it's like flying over New York City and I can say that, oh, there's Central Park and there's Times Square and there's Meatpacking District. I don't know. Um, but you don't know the city until you walk the streets and you talk to people. And some would argue, most New Yorkers would, would argue that you don't know the city until you know how the city moves, the system that moves the city. And what is the system that moves humanity? Culture. So you really don't know people until you know the culture, which is anchored in identity and beliefs. So as we look at the things that we can observe, right? It's like, oh, I'm I'm gonna play the music. I think the music is fun. I'm gonna wear this thing, this this dress because I think that it's looked kind of cool and it's hip and it's funky. I'm gonna put on henna because look how fun the henna is. But without understanding why those things exist and what it means to those people because of their beliefs and their ideologies you run the risk of offending them, right? And the better we understand those things, you know, I, I think that not only do we learn about them, but we also learn about ourselves, which I think is really powerful. Mm -hmm. 